there was nothing. Oh, right to the floor. That's not cool. YouTube and welcome back to the 2500 Chevy series uh, part number two. I'm gonna take the wheels off. And I don't know if you saw the little clip that I had uploaded uh, recently. Uh, I'm gonna be replacing that caliper and uh, heading to the hardware store for a replacement bolt. Yeah, we're gonna start it off by loosening up all of the lug nuts. Now that we've got all the lug nuts loosened up, let's get this vehicle jacked up in the air. Get the jack stands placed underneath, using a couple of rotors to keep it from sinking into the pavement. Lower it down onto the jack stands. Jack underneath it for a little added support. All right, he's got wheel extenders on him. Otherwise, these rims won't clear the caliper, which you'll see on the other side. We're also going to need to get these other nuts out of there so we can remove this unit here. Those are 19s. Let me see if I can get these off with the impact. Inside the wheel spacer so you don't lose anything, kick anything. Okay, let's get these caliper bracket, caliper bolts out. We don't have any place here to hang the caliper, so I'm gonna have to set the caliper right on top of the leaf spring. Figure out what size these are. 18s. Yep, those are 18s. Grab a breaker bar. No way you're getting into this with an impact. Not getting in there with a breaker bar either. Yeah, in this case, Tire makes a really good seat. I have no idea if you guys can even see what I'm doing in here because of this the way the sun is directly overhead. That might make it a little bit better. Get in here with a 18 millimeter. That's a big bolt for a caliper. Bottom one be able to get the impact on, but not the top one. Both of these bolts out of here. Now, 
What you're pulling out of here is slide pin bolts. They're pretty well greased. The stop was not going to come out. You're going to have to lift the caliper up off. Leave the bolt in place for now. Just remember when you pull this bracket off, you go put the bracket back on if this bolt is in place, otherwise you're going to have to back up, start over again. And then I need to get my uh, clamp, close the caliper up a little bit. Now, the whole purpose for what we're doing today is we have to replace the uh, caliper and bracket on the passenger side and right now we're breaking this down to inspect the parking brake and make adjustments on it uh, it does almost hold the vehicle so I'm assuming all the cables are working properly they all look good I don't see anything chewed up so chances are good it's probably just going to be adjusting the brake pads so let's get this caliper off Hopefully my C-clamp is big enough to get on this. Should be. I've used this on the Ford F-250 Super Duty a couple of times and I never had a problem making it fit, so... There we go. And again, all you're doing is just, as soon as you see the movement in here, this is a double piston, so we're going to need to get the other piston as well. Just enough to get it off. Right. There's that other slide pin bolt. There's the caliper. Set this right up on top of the leaf spring. We got the jumper cables hooked up to the Crown Victoria, which is what you hear running in the background. Got it hooked up to the truck to charge the battery back up because of a parasitic draw that we're going to be looking into after this is done. And you got the caliper off. Get in here and inspect around the boot all the way around. Make sure there's no damage to the boot. This looks clean. Just a lot of rust. The caliper, the rotor's loose enough now that we can move that around. Make sure these brake pads are in good shape, which they are. Got the hardware in place. Boots are all good there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these two caliper bolts out. And those are probably also 18 millimeter. Yep, we'll get those off. And then we'll take this whole bracket right out of here. And using the two wrench method. Wow, those bolts are a little crusty. Let's back you up a little bit here so you can see some more. There, how's that work? All right, two wrench method. And down at the bottom. spun out with the uh, impact but oh well it's not impossible to use manual tools stop bolt get ready to hold it or and or catch the bracket there's the other bolt if you look real close at this bolt, you'll see that uh, somebody's actually greased the daylights out of it, which is probably the only reason I got it out without a major fight. Go ahead and remove the bracket. Make sure that the brake pads... Okay. And the brake pads are a little stuck, so we're going to we'll clean that up while we got it apart. Lip on the inside holding the parking brake. Grab the hitch over here. 
All right, so this really isn't all that bad. And the material's nice and thick. It's not jacked off the uh, brake shoe heart in the middle part of it. <laughs> bad habit of blowing brake dust. You inhale that stuff, it'll kill you down the road. There's no uh, oil or anything down in here, so everything's good, clean. And a little bit of seepage maybe from the build up on there, but there's a self adjuster down at the bottom. And if you look right here, I don't know if you can see where my finger is in here. Probably not. Yeah, right there. There's a slot which is accessible from the back. There should be. Oh wow, there's a quite the interesting hole back there, no plug. So we'll be able to adjust the adjuster from there. And I don't know if you guys can see this in here or not. This is the adjuster. So we're gonna have to adjust that a little bit. Get this brake cleaned up. Grab some brake cleaner and spray it down. Grab the pet trainers, get those down here so we don't make a mess. Alright, we've got everything in here all sprayed down, cleaned up. Got the uh, adjuster removed, cleaned out. I'm gonna put a little bit of fresh grease on this, put it back in. Now we can put the drum back on and adjust the parking brake. Got the cell glide. A little bit right on the inside there. And mash a little bit down into these threads. here to work it right into the threads, wipe off the access from here, some more back into the threads down here, and the access back on the end again, and spin this back on, that all the way back down until it's closed. You'll need all sorts of levers to do this. It's not an easy thing to do to get these back in. The adjuster is now back in place. Make sure that the brake pads are sitting. There's three contact points behind these on each one. Make sure that you're sitting on top of those contact points. Go ahead and set the drum back over it again. Make sure the drum's all the way on. We have a couple of those lug nuts. Spin them on. brake spoon and get behind the assembly, get through the little adjustment hole and start turning that adjuster. Now because of the precarious angle that you have to get in there, adjusting that with a screwdriver, you're probably not going to be able to get in here. If you got this sprint, this bolt right here, you're not going to have the movement. So you get this thing here called a uh, brake spoon and you get in through the hole find your little wheel in there and then you can start adjusting it everything is pretty much done by feel because at these angles without a lift you really cannot uh, get this thing up in here high enough to be able to see in there. This is actually pretty hard to do with it on the ground. So we 
locked up the, the rotor now. Not locked up. It's nice and stiff now, so we're going to back it back off. Just a couple of turns. More. You want to get a nice free movement in it. And then go and set and release the emergency brake a couple of times. tight in here. Real tight. Now we're going to have to clean that up. It's hard wearing out. You know, there's rust built up inside of here. The other side's probably the same way. Same thing. So we're going to break out the wire brush, clean these up, clean all of this up, get these landings right here all cleaned up on both sides. Now just to give you a quick before and after, that's before, the rust scaling all built up inside of it, and this is after, just using a wire brush on it. Clean that all the way up, all the surfaces that there's going to be any kind of pressure or anything sliding. You have to replace these if there's any physical damage to them. But in this case, they look fine. So we're going to go ahead and clean the other one up and get these back in place. Both of our hardware cleaned up. Now we're going to do the same thing with the caliper bracket. We're going to use the new composite wheel on it to see how this does. Now again, be particularly careful with these boots. You don't want to tear any holes in them. In this case, I can just fold it down and out of the way. Yeah. 
as you probably see from the looks of this, that composite wheel does not do a very good job. We still have a lot of layering on here that we need to take off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here with a chisel and just tap on this and shatter that rust away. Light taps with the hammer. You don't have to go beating the daylights out of it, and you definitely don't want to go pounding pits into it. But as, you're, as you do this, you'll see the rust actually start to lift the scale right off. You just continue to do that until you've got all of the layers of rust off of it. Not too bad, let's get the other side. Okay, just from tapping on that, break away the rust that's on the top. Now we'll grab the file, clean this up a little bit more. Try to get that cleaned up as best you can. Now this, this landing right here is the critical landing that all the pressure is applied to. All these are is just to keep the brake patch moving in and out. Same thing on the other side. Just take off the imperfections. Try not to take down metal. Just It takes a lot of, a lot of work to get these cleaned up. And get any imperfections out of there that you can. Try out your hardware, make sure your hardware fits properly. Now once you verify that your brakes are sliding back and forth on your hardware, take your hardware back off. And then make sure you coat all of those metal surfaces with a light film of grease. really lubricate it per se, you're just putting a coating on it to help prevent the elements from getting back to those nice, nicely cleaned up surfaces. kind of like that when you're done. And it's all your surfaces that still have a little bit of rust. The rust will turn purple because of the grease, but that's okay. It'll soak right into the grease or into the rust. Get 
go ahead and reapply your hardware. Just put the bracket in place. Snug both of them up, and then once you've got them both snug, double wrench method. And go ahead and lock it down, nice and tight. don't need to push the pistons back in any further so at this point we can go ahead and put the brake pads back in place bring the caliper back down now remember, this is the one where you got that pin. Go ahead and put the pin in. Line it up. Get it started into the caliper bracket. Push it in. And then lower the caliper down onto your brake pads. And clean up the old grease off the old other pin. Put a little fresh grease on it. And we'll go ahead and install that one. Be careful of your boot. And go ahead and tighten down those bolts. Double wrench method. Nice and tight. So pin bolts, you don't need to go full gorilla on these. Just make it nice and tight. And go ahead and apply the brake. Pump the brake paddle up. Something just blew out. Something just blew out. I don't see any dripping though. I don't like that. Oh, I see spray. Alright, where did the brake line blow? And you see a little bit of spray pattern down there. I don't know where it's coming from yet, but something sprayed. Let's see if we can find the drip. Are you kidding me? All right, who the heck did that? That's a lousy bend. But up there, it's all wet.
God, I love working on vehicles in the rust belt. I don't know if you guys can see up in there or not, but oh my God, everything up there is all covered in brake fluid now. So somewhere up in there is where that blown out brake line is. We're going to have to find that and fix it. And I suspect the easiest way to deal with this is going to be to take the bed right off the truck. We got a whole bunch of wiring issues back there to take care of. Get all that mess. You know, might as well just pull the whole blasted bed right off this truck. Get in there and get some new brake lines put in here the right way because apparently somebody somewhere along the lines put in another brake line and did a crappy job. This is one of those moments where sometimes I hate doing this stuff. Yeah, go ahead and put the wheel extender back on. Make sure there's no crap on the back of it. Go ahead and put this back on. Draw the lug nuts back in place. Start all of them by finger first. Tighten down. All right, put the wheel back on. The lug nuts out of the way so you can get out. Might as well take the pet trainer out of the way at this point. Make sure to pull out your brake spoon. Spin all of these lug nuts on by hand. And grab the 22 millimeter. The other side. Right, let's get this wheel off and then you guys will see what uh, that previous video was all about. A little short one. Are you guys ready for this?
Take a good look at that caliper. That right there. Let's see, we'll get you resituated here. You look right down on that. And it's all worn right in. Somebody neglected to put this caliper bolt in or it fell out. So we're going to tear all that down and go get a replacement bolt. We've already got the replacement caliper and bracket. The semi-loaded assembly. This out of the way. That's good that all of that moves. 18 millimeter. Oh, wow. Like that. Caliper bolt loosened up. Oh, wait a minute. This doesn't have those. This has got torques on it. You know what? It's all junk. I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to take the whole bracket assembly off. Let's see. What do we got to do here to get this off? A 10 millimeter bolt, I think, on the uh, brake line. I'm going to need to pinch that. Let's make sure that's a 10 millimeter. Nope, that's not a 10. Is it a 12? Nope, it's another one of those goofy 11s. Get this brake line pinched. Not that it really matters at this point because we've got a brake line that feeds both of these rear wheels that's blown out, but don't want what's in there to come out all over the place. We'll just get this brake line just the heck out of the way right now. Now when you take this off, your banjo bolt, you got two washers, one on each side of it. You don't want to lose those or the banjo bolt just in case the new one doesn't come with a new banjo bolt and hardware or just the washers. Now let's go ahead and get this assembly off of here. Let's start off by pushing the piston back a little bit. Oh boy. That way there, when I get that one bolt remaining out of here, I can back the whole thing off. Brake, oh, yeah, brake fluid that was in the caliper. That's why we're using pet trainers. Keep it from getting all over the ground. Clean up my mess. Alright. Now let's get that 18 millimeter out of there. Chisel. Well, that's not going to work either. That's too long. All right, let's find something that I can jam in there that isn't too long. Let's see, will a socket extension do it? Yep, I think a socket extension will do it. Down here again. 
matter what I do, I'm not winning this battle. Oh, wow. Here is a penetrating oil. And just soak the daylights out of everything. You guys out there that don't understand why sometimes car repairs are so expensive, you know, this is time. Time is money. And this is a lot of time. This is one of those moments again where I wish I had a torch and I wish I had a lift. Guess I could definitely use some more room on this. seriously hurt hitting something. <sighs> and we're only out an eighth of an inch so far. this one all the way out. Considering the state that this thing came from, it wasn't Massachusetts. I can't, I can't believe the stuff that that state allowed to pass. I mean, if it, if it can move 
forward and backwards. Oh, I hate that state. I wish they didn't put so many unsafe vehicles on the road. You guys can guess down in the comments if you want what state this one's from. But uh, I'll give you a hint. The inspection sticker's in the middle of the windshield. left off with the uh, camera battery dying as I was trying to wrench out the bottom bolt of the caliper bracket. That caliper has since gone uh, out to the auto parts store for core and right there's our, uh, our new one. And let's see, my coffee, brake parts, but we got to get in here. You guys have got to see what happened here. This, this just keeps getting better. Get you zoomed down here. Now I got that caliper off, get the caliper bracket out of here, and I took this drum and I pulled this thing off, and I was not expecting to see that. Yeah. 